and this year will emphasize craft. My goal is to shift from assessment accountability to instructional accountability with choice and flexibility. You need to do the same too. Many ways we need to test less, but test right. We need to move from test accountability to instruction accountability. We need to move from it in our minds and in our actions. You'll learn soon about all the work that was done last year with the potential proposed new high school graduation requirements. We need to honor that work when we learn about it. In many respects, it's led us to the need for making sure that we have a comprehensive view of the whole student. We need to focus on successful instruction. We need to look at focusing on a successful instructional model and an assessment framework. They both go hand in hand. So what am I going to do next? I talked last week and the week before last with each one of our board members individually, but I'm ready to go to them as a group. And I'm going to ask the board to go to the state and request a state waiver. And the state waiver I'm asking the board to go to the state and request is to discontinue PARC as it's currently administered for a three-year period of time. I'm also going to ask the board to ask the state to allow us to discontinue CMAS for a three-year period of time as it is currently administered. And what I'm going to suggest to the board to suggest to the state is that we replace park and CMAS administration with a random sample of students. Because we know that a random sample of students will still provide us with the same type of statistical result that we would need to have in place to evaluate students and to look at our schools. And over that three year period of time, I would like to spend my life and many of you spend your lives looking at ways in which we could come up with a potential evaluation for all of our students in our schools. We've had in place for several years the Achieve Graduate with several components of the Achieve Graduate. I say we bring in experts, not vendors, not vendors, but experts in the field to sit and work and guide us. I say that we have so many public engagement sessions that are out there and we hear from our parents, we hear from our students, we hear from our teachers, we hear from our principals. What does evaluating a student really truly look like? And in essence, what would the evaluation of a school look like? So I'm asking the board to charge me with three years worth of work to do what I think is right for students. Why? Because our students deserve the very best. In essence, I'm also removing the requirement of MAP testing in the, school, in the schools for both the spring and the fall. And I'm removing it only to make it a choice for our schools. And it's a choice that they can make during the year. Eric and, and Dr. Demi Smith will have to develop a plan on how you would request the administration of MAP. But what I'm asking each one of our schools to do is think about the words narrow and focus. Do we need to MAP test all students? Within the first two weeks of school, I can remember as a teacher, I can remember as a principal, I can remember as a senior director, school executive director, we knew who is and who is not learning within the first three to four days of school. We knew it through our observations. We knew it through our daily interactions. We knew it by the first piece of work the students produced. We knew how to plan interventions. And we know how to plan interventions. So we may want to consider narrowing and focusing that particular assessment. But again, whose choice is it? It's the school's choice. The school should have that choice and that flexibility. I'm also expecting that the D11 playbook be implemented fully and be implemented with close, close, close attention to the academic standards and that they be taught to mastery. Taught to mastery.